today I'm gonna to take you guys exactly through my boat and everything that I'm running this year for 2024. I've had this boat for a few years, but I'm gonna give you guys the complete walkthrough and tour of everything that I have on this boat. I run at Phoenix now for three or four years and I've honestly loved it. So we'll get into that, all those details. If you guys stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you exactly what I would do on a budget for a boat and then also what I would do if I was just plum flat out rich, could buy anything I want and rig my boat up exactly how I want to, particularly for electronics. So this should be a fun video. I'm excited to show you guys exactly what I'm running. So we're out on the water now, and as I mentioned, we're gonna do a full boat walkthrough. I mentioned it's my 2024 rig. I was kind of messing around with you guys a little bit. I've had this boat for, for a while. I've, I bought this boat used. It's a 2017 Phoenix uh, 21 PHX. So huge boat. I've taken it all over the country over the last few years. It has handled rough water better than any boat I've ever been in. It is, has a ton of space, as you guys can see here. I mean, the deck is absolutely huge. I fished three people off the front, just the front, with no issues whatsoever. And uh, it's just been a phenomenal boat. I love the color scheme. Like I said, I, I bought it used, ended up being pretty much exactly what I wanted. But the whole reason I'm doing this is to show you guys, like I said, exactly what system and setup I have. I know a couple of people have asked about it, but not only did I want to do that, but as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wanted to give you guys who are going out and either buying a new boat or upgrading your boat or buying a used boat, whatever it may be, what I'm going to give you after I walk through all of my boat, exactly what I would change, what I would do differently, both on a budget and with unlimited money. So hopefully you guys enjoy this and let's jump right into it. Drop a comment down below. I'd like to hear what your guys' favorite boat build would be. Go ahead and uh, let me know, you know what boat you're running, what length of boat, and uh, what the perfect electronic setup would be. I'm sure we could have some pretty good conversations about that down in the comments below. So let's go ahead and start at the back of the boat first, and then we'll work our way forward because the best stuff's on the front of the boat. That's my opinion. That's where you fish, and uh, that's where you catch all the fish, so we'll work our way back there. All right, to start off, I'll start off with the motor. I have a Mercury Optimax two-stroke uh, Pro XS. It's a 250, 250 horsepower. From a performance perspective, it has been fantastic. It's a pretty fast motor. Again, this is a 21 and a half foot boat. It's Phoenix's, well, I think, biggest boat, unless the XE is about the same size, their new XE. But it has been a great motor. I mean, again, it pushes this thing the fastest I've ever been with a quarter tank of gas and with a little bit of tackle, nothing like a full tournament load or anything. I've been 74 in this boat. So it pushes this big boat pretty fast. I would say with two guys, full tournament gear and everything, you're hitting upper 60s, which again, for this size of boat with that motor is fantastic. I mean, the new four strokes are probably not gonna push it that fast. Like I said, I've beat people down the lake in just little local t uh, club tournaments and stuff, especially in rough water. Like I said, in rough water, this boat will beat just about any boat out there. but. That's what I have here is this Mercury Pro XS. It's on a manual jack plate. I think it's, it's either a 12 or a 14 inch. I don't know exactly how big that jack plate is, but I've never ever adjusted it. If I'm being honest with you guys, I checked the adjustment when, uh, when I first bought the boat and I think you want it like the, uh, the center of the prop or basically the prop shaft about two and a quarter inches from what I looked at about uh, two and a quarter inches below that hole. So correct me if I'm wrong on that guys, because you guys may know more way on that, but if I remember correctly, it's in between, it was right around that two to three inch mark somewhere in there. I know it's, it's very minor, so that's kind of a rough estimate, but it was spot on. And again, this boat runs perfectly well, handles in rough water, and it's got a little bit of speed for how big of a boat it is. So that's my jack plate. And then in terms of my shallow water anchors, I actually bought this with the 12 foot talons from Minn Kota. And you guys say 12 foot. I mean, they're super long. I've actually really enjoyed these, these talons. Again, I've taken this boat all over the country and it is actually really nice to be able to go ahead and drop your shallow water anchors in. I can get in this boat about 10 and a half feet, almost 11 feet deep uh, where I can, you know, 
put those shallow water anchors down and then I don't have to use the trolling motor. So I think that's kind of an advantage. Would I recommend it to everybody? No, but we'll, again, we'll jump into that in the second half of this video onto what I would do different with the entirety of this boat. So 12 foot talons there, they've been solid. I've had zero issues with them actually whatsoever, aside from uh, Lake Fork about breaking them off on the bottom with four foot waves when I'm trying to swim bait fish, but that's just the bolts. But again, these things have held, I mean, they held in that four foot waves, no, like it's, it's crazy. I mean, they flexed and banded, but they held well. So again, super, super long depth or super deep depth that they can reach, but ultimately I've enjoyed it. I mean, they're super long. And again, if you guys can see here, let me level it above the motor. It's not that much higher than the motor. So I know with, with either, you know, Raptors or uh, power poles, you uh when you get the 10 footers they stick up really high guys these are 12 foot talons and they don't stick that high above the motor i mean it's maybe a foot so you get super long range and you know with or super good depth range without all that space above the boat so that's that at the back i am not going to go into all the compartments guys i mean maybe my battery rigging i'll just tell you about it real quick i've got three batteries for the trolling motor and I've got uh, three 12 volt batteries for the trolling motor and I've got one 12 volt battery for cranking and then my two graphs, which again, stay tuned here because I'm going to tell you guys what I would do different if I were buying a boat or buying a new boat or upgrading my boat. So that's, that's my battery setup. But again, I'm not gonna go into all the compartments. I mean, you got two live wells and I'm not gonna open them up, but storage, storage tools, all that stuff. Uh, middle compartment, a bunch of tackle right compartment, I normally do a bunch of clothes, uh, hats, anything out on the water that you would need, extra rain, rain gear. I got my day box, scales, bluers, all that stuff. Cooler in the center, extra lock, rod locker for your, for your uh, partner, and then the main rod locker, got a bunch of rods in there. That's pretty standard, nothing crazy there. So now let's move into the console where I sit. So as you guys can see here, this is what I look at when I am in my boat pretty clean setup i actually really enjoy this uh, for where i fish mostly again i'll say that i'll say that what i would do differently in a perfect world but this is 95 percent of the way there guys i would say i normally and when i'm back here i normally use this for mapping and it's been great i mean that's really all i use it for i'll use it for side scan when i go to new lakes i'll just uh it's a 12 inch screen it's a 12 inch Lorange hds live and when I go ahead and split the screen, is it the biggest? No, but you can absolutely get, you know, some mapping, some sonar. And then if you put the side scan horizontally, if you lay that out, how you lay it out on your uh, Lowrance units and just make it a thin little sliver right there on the bottom, that's what I do. So I normally go mapping, down scan, sides, uh, I'm sorry, mapping, 2D, down scan, and then uh, just a sliver on the bottom, I use side scan. And uh, that's how I lay that out, but I've had zero issues with that. It's clean, it's easy, and uh, I've got these on Bass Boat Technology mounts. Zero issues with these mounts, guys. I mean, they are solid. I mean, it is unbelievable. I have taken this boat, again, I've been all over the country in this, been up north, out west, super big waves, I mean, ridiculously big waves, where you have to tighten literally every screw and every boat, I'm sorry, every screw and every bolt in the boat when you get off the water. Like I said, that's another story I could tell you. I got lots of stories about stuff almost falling off the boat, but those mounts, those two mounts there have absolutely been solid. So that's what I have at the console, just one 12 inch HDS uh, live. And it's been perfect for everything that I do. Now, as we walk up to the front of the boat, again, you guys can see just how big this front deck is. I mean, it is huge. So you could easily, I mean, golly guys, I'm standing on this front. You could literally stand at the front of this boat. I don't know how you guys are gonna be able to see this, but you can stand at the front of the boat, no problem whatsoever, and probably fish two people wide up here. So that's one thing I love about this boat is you can take, like I said, I've had three people fishing off the front deck alone. So you could fish four people out of this boat. Uh, no problems whatsoever. But this is the front I ended up going with. I'll go into the electronics here. I've got another HDS-12 uh, live from Lowrance up front here. 
I normally run it on split screen between mapping and forward facing. It's not perfect, but uh, it works. It definitely works. You guys have seen some of my sonar recordings. It's pretty clear when you have a full battery and that's another topic as well. We'll jump into all that. But that's my setup up here is one 12 inch screen and it works. Guys, we don't need to make this super complicated from a fishing perspective. Again, it's just fishing. So I know a lot of people are complaining out there about you know all this technology and all this other stuff. I'm a big tech guy. I love, I love technology. Uh, it's, it's changed the game completely for sure and it's a lot, a lot of money. But at the end of the day, it's still fishing. And like I said, I don't compete at any super, super high level. But if I did, I would definitely upgrade some things. But at the end of the day, I am doing just fine and catching a ton of fish by just having, again, one 12 inch unit up front. And uh, that's that. So now let's jump into my trolling motor. So this is my trolling motor, Lowrance Ghost, it's the 47 inch. I actually bought this used when I bought the boat and it has been rock solid. It is a little noisy. It's been through the ringer for sure. But at the time that I bought this boat and I went to upgrade my trolling motor, I went to the Bassmaster Classic out in, it was Fort Worth, when it was in Fort Worth on uh, Lake Ray Roberts. And what I ended up doing is I went in with an open mind and I said, you know what, I, I don't care what brand it is, but I'm gonna pick the best trolling motor on the market. And now today, again, there's a bunch of different options out there today, but at that time there was just the power pole, I'm sorry, not the power pole, the Minkota Ultrex, the Lowrance Ghost, and then the, what was the other one that I looked at? The Garmin Force and then the, oh man, Motor Guide. Those were kind of the big four, at least that were demoed there at the Bassmaster Classic. And guys, for just who I am, this is what worked for me. But at the end of the day, I settled on this Lowrance Ghost. At the time, it just had the most power. It was super, super efficient. And I can see that with my batteries. It's unbelievable. I can go a full day of fishing on my batteries and it still shows full, which is just stupid. Uh, especially, like I said, where I fish, it's a lot of, of you know, run and gun and you know heavy wind and uh, trolling motors in the water a lot so that's that it's been a great trolling motor and it also has this breakaway mount which is pretty neat right in there see so what happens there is if you hit a stump instead of the trolling motor being rigid it's just going to flex and deflect off so that's a pretty cool feature and then like i said between the efficiency and then the thrust that the, the total output of the motor and then that feature right there combined with this foot pedal I'm a very linear guy and I like things orderly and you know just linear and mirrored and whatever you may may say about that but I really liked how this foot pedal is square or rectangular and I just like how it fits in the boat and it looked really appealing to my eye so at that time that's what I thought was the best and that's what I went with and uh, as you guys can see pretty cool setup there now as I promised I am going to let's do a reverse and let's go back to the back of the boat and I'm going to walk you guys through from a you know motor and electronics perspective you just what I would do differently based on a budget and then based on if I had unlimited money in the world so that's kind of what I'm going to do now uh, let's walk back here in terms of the actual boat hull itself I'm going to just say I'm going to assume that you can pick out whatever boat hull or whatever size boat you can afford. Again, an 18 or 19 foot boat is gonna be completely fine for fishing, but at the end of the day, you know, it might not be able to go as well in rough water. It may not be able to fit as many people, as much tackle, etc. So you guys gotta make your decision on the boat hull itself. I've got a few buddies looking at, you know, multiple different options. I'm not gonna steer you on that. All I can say is I've ran this Phoenix for years in just about every type of water out there. I'm sorry, not type, it's only been in fresh water, but about as you know, rough of water and as calm of water, wind, you know, all that stuff. And it has held up perfectly. I mean, the hole is fantastic. I've had zero issues. If there has been any issues with Phoenix, whether it be, you know, let's say it's a little, you know, a fitting, they had a little bit of an issue with uh, live well fittings, cracking, guys called them up they sent me a new one within like a couple days completely free i mean hands down phenomenal customer service so i can't say enough good things about them 
Um, but anyway, you guys choose your boat. So let's go to the back here. And I'm going to first start off by what I would do differently back here. So if I, let's start with the motor. If I were on a budget, I would, on, I would honestly a, get either a Yamaha or a Mercury. I think the two strokes are good. No, they're a little bit temperamental. You can have some issues with them for sure, but they're minor issues and overall their performance is great. Yamahas, the older Yamahas, great motor as well. A uh, little bit of issues here and there I've heard, but at, they're again, a solid motor. Those would be kind of the two motors that I would steer towards if I were, again, on a budget and buying used, I'm gonna say an older motor, I'm gonna say this is not new, let's say it's a prior generation of motor for this budget build. Um, I, think, I don't think you'd go wrong with Yamaha or Mercury. That's kind of what I would stick with. I know that's pretty generic. Everyone kind of knows that, but that's about it. In terms of the shallow water anchors, if I were on a budget and uh, I would evaluate the type of fishing that you normally do. So for me, I'm a big offshore fisherman. If I were on a budget, guys, I honestly, and they didn't come with this boat, I probably wouldn't have them. I mean, they're nowadays, I think they're 3,500 bucks a piece new. Um, it'd be better if you bought them used. You guys can get some good deals if you were to get them used. But that's, I would say that for me, if you're an offshore fisherman or you're fishing a deeper highland reservoir, uh, some of these clear lakes in North Georgia, or honestly just anywhere where it's deeper than 10 feet, you don't need them. You absolutely don't need them. I, I really only use mine, like I said, at particular times of the year, particularly during the spawn, like March, April, May. And then other than that, it's just literally just for unloading and loading by myself. So that I can park them in the ground and go drive my truck up to you know the parking spot. So you absolutely don't need them. But for you guys, if, if you're a shallow water fisherman, then uh, I would say buy used ones. I mean, there's lots of older generations out there. Power pole is solid. That's probably where I'd lean to since they are the original. And uh, they've gone through a few iterations at this point, but try to get some of those power poles. That's what I would do. And in terms of a jack plate, you definitely don't need a hydraulic jack plate. So on a budget, stick with the manual. Like I said, mine's completely fine. Uh, might lose a little bit of performance at the end of the day, but it is what it is. So now, if I had unlimited money in the world and I'm building a new boat today, I'll throw up a list of uh, some of my things that I've been writing down just kind of for my dream boat. But this is exactly how I would build it. I would, I'm not, I don't wanna knock anybody, but I would 100% get a Yamaha. Just from the new Yamahas and the new Mercs, I believe that there are a lot less issues with the new Yamahas. And I would put that on a hydraulic jack plate Probably an Atlas. I've heard better things about the Atlas than the Bobs. Again, I don't, I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus here. That's just what I've heard from buddies and from people you know, in the industry and just talking around. In terms of shallow water anchors, I would get 10 foot Raptors. That's where I would lean. That adaptive anchoring feature on the new Raptors is pretty stinking cool. So that's gonna give you about, you're gonna be able to you know, shallow water anchor touchdown in about, I would say, eight to you know eight to nine feet for sure um and for me that's plenty especially for shallow water fishing you're not going to see much more even on these clearer lakes more than you know eight nine feet down so that's plenty of depth for me that's what i would do that adaptive anchor featuring would just be that much more uh, that would sell me on that again if i had unlimited money now let's move into the console on what i would do differently not much different here, to be honest. So I would go two graphs instead of one. I'd still go two 12s. Uh, the visual is plenty for me. I don't need the 16s back here, I wouldn't think. Yeah, let's, let's do, I guess if uh, with unlimited money, let's start with that and then we'll go to the budget. But I would still have a Laurent HDS Live. I don't think the difference between the new pros is that much different. The performance metrics, if you look at them, guys, is not worth the money, in my opinion. And there's some pretty good sales right now going on uh, for these units. So you can get them, I think, for less than $2,000. That's what I would do. Even if you have unlimited money, I still think, I don't think it's worth it for the, you know, $1,500, like, to, to get the new ones. I guess you get the new ones if you want, but the performance is not that much greater. And then... What I would do next to that, I would use that Lowrance for mapping particularly. And then next to it, I would have a 12 inch Humminbird Apex. That's what I would do. 
and I would use that for mapping as well. And I would switch that to side scan once I started graphing around. Uh, maybe put some mapping in there as well. But I would have a Lowrance HDS Live and a 12 inch Lowrance Apex. And again, that would just be for side scan and mapping, just to have two different unit options on here uh, to cross reference. And, you know, I think particular brands do certain things very well. And I think Humminbird is really good at the side scan and mapping, especially on a lake like Lake Lanier. It's, it's their home lake. So uh, they do, they have very good maps on this lake, particularly. And then Lowrance, I love their user interface and how easy it is to save a waypoint. I know Humminbird has made some changes to that. So uh, hopefully that gets a little bit better there, but I would still run one of each. Now for the budget option here, guys, what I would do is kind of how I have almost mine set up, but get a nine inch screen. Like you don't need a 12. Like I said, don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Again, this is on a budget. So not what I would do in a dream world or what would be ideal. But if you're on a budget, just get the nine inch screen. I mean, it's going to be, get it for mapping. Um, that's really what you need it for. Maybe some side scan if you're going to do some graphing around. But if you're just going to go fishing, get a nine inch screen for, for mapping and then do your fishing at the front of the boat. That's where I would leave it at that. Um, you could compete. You're, you're not going to be at, you know, you're not going to have all the tools to be competitive for sure. But again, on a budget, just get a nine inch. I would get a nine inch Lowrance. That's what I would do. That's my opinion. Now let's move to the front of the boat here. Let's start with a budget up here. If I were on a budget, I would start and again, up here, I would probably get a nine inch screen. Uh, nine inch Lowrance would probably be my go-to just so the units pair together. I think that's really nice for like waypoint management and stuff is if you can link the two units together, then uh, you don't have to you know save multiple waypoints on each unit, but that's what I would do. And then honestly, I mean, you really don't need anything more than that. Maybe a simple 2D transducer on the bottom. Again, this is just going basic budget fishing, you know? Uh, that's what I'm giving you guys. And then in terms of the trolling motor, I would go with the Minn Kota Fortrex. That's what I had before this, this uh, Lowrance Ghost. And guys, it was perfect. I never ever had an issue with it. It was a fantastic trolling motor. Never had any problems whatsoever. They're relatively cheap. I mean, for trolling motors, they're relatively cheap and you're gonna get such good quality. Uh, it doesn't have spot lock. It doesn't have all that other stuff with it, but you don't really need that. I mean, it's you don't need it. You use it every once in a while. Again, I normally move so much when I fish. Like, I normally hit spot lock to tie lures, you know, tie lures on or make sure if I catch a fish that I stay in the same area, but you don't need it. You don't need it to go fishing, absolutely not. You'll just be on the trolling motor more trying to keep your boat where it's supposed to be. So. That's kind of the budget build up front there. I forgot to mention earlier, but I've got this one on a bass boat technology mount as well. Kind of just, you know, lift it up there. And then let's jump into in a dream, you know, a dream scenario, what I would have on my boat to fish multiple different lakes. Uh, again, I like to tournament fish. You guys know that I'm not in anything crazy big, but this would be my dream boat for many different lakes because each lake has particular things that are required. Like on Lanier, you definitely need forward facing sonar and maybe not so much Humminbird 360. So my opinion there, but that's what it is. So let's jump into it up here. From what I've seen today, I was just talking to a guy the other day from the opens and he had the NBT Marine uh, large units, you know, the, the um, monitors, the monitors that are massive. I think they make a 16 inch and a 22 inch, if I'm not mistaken. It is giant. Honestly, guys, I personally probably would not put that on my boat. Uh, that's a hot take for sure. And definitely could be a little bit, you know, controversial for sure. That's big. I mean, that's just freakishly big. I, that's unbelievable. And I just don't even, even with unlimited money, I don't know if I would personally need that big of a screen. I mean, that's a stinking TV. I mean, the 16 inch screens are big. So that's my two cents on that. But let me run you through it real quick. I would go, I would have three graphs up front. And uh, I know that's excessive. It's a lot. But I would have one Lowrance. I would have a 12 inch Lowrance HDS Live. Again, linked to my other Lowrance for waypoint management. I would then have a Humminbird unit, a 12 inch 
probably Apex again. Uh, maybe one less than that. I don't know. It depends. But just for Humminbird 360, just for those specific lakes, like when you go to those shallower largemouth lakes with a lot of stumps, particularly like out in Texas, stuff like that, that Humminbird 360 is solid. I mean, that's really cool technology. And then on top of it, I would have, again, those two graphs, two 12 inches on the bottom, a Lorance and, eight, and a Humminbird. I would then stack on top of it a 16 inch Garmin 8 series, strictly for forward facing sonar. Right now, hands down, Garmin has the best picture and the best sonar in the game. It's not even close. I mean, it, it's not even close. Like, you can see a minnow at like 100 feet with the new, you know, the new LV, I think it's LV34 uh, live scope system from Garmin. So that's exactly how I would build it with unlimited money. It would all be, you know, on, on obviously either Bass Pro Technologies or, or one of those other aluminum mounts. You want a pretty solid mount, especially with all that weight up there and you guys hitting waves. Again, had no issues with those whatsoever so far, but you want to make sure that your graphs are, per, you know, properly mounted to, uh, you know, to be up there on the front of the boat. So that's how I would have my front three. Again, two on the bottom stacked, one 16 inch Garmin on top, strictly for forward facing sonar. That obviously means I would get the new Garmin forward facing sonar system. Uh, that's my opinion. And then in terms of trolling motor, I would go with the new Ultrax Quest. It is a stinking good motor. I think what they did, they were behind for a little while, I believe, and, and again, this is my opinion, when the Ghost originally came out, I believe they took all of the good qualities from the Ghost and then put them into the tried and true Ultrex. So that's probably where I would lean this time around if I were to buy new today. But again, guys, all of this stuff, I mean, you got a 16 inch Garmin is probably $6,000. These new units are $4,000 a piece. A new trolling motor is $4,000. So you're talking 25, you know, potentially upwards of $25,000 on electronics to rig out a boat, you know, I'll say with unlimited budget. So one thing I also forgot to mention here with my Lowrance Ghost, uh, this is just a little tip for you guys, but you guys can see here, I got a troll tame lock uh, I had problems with my Lowrance and uh, deploying in really, really rough water. I don't know if I snapped the pin that's in there. It normally has a locking pin and it worked for a while, but then it just completely stopped working whatsoever. So it started bouncing when I hit it big waves. And then all I did was just get this mount, like I said, this uh, troll locker, troll tamer, and uh, I tapped the stabilizer shaft and now it's locked in. I mean, it's this thing is not going to move anywhere. It never has uh, since I've had that, and it's super easy to use. Just kick it with your foot to deploy. It's that simple. So that's pretty much it for my boat walkthrough. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. If you did, go ahead and like it, subscribe to the channel, share it out with your friends. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay tuned for all the content coming down the line. I've got the Lake Hartwell videos, I believe, coming up here pretty soon. If you're not going to want to miss those, we're going to do, again, practice, tournament, and then a 2020 video as well. So I've got all that stuff coming. But, again, thank you guys so much for the support. I really appreciate it. Let, you, let, me, know, uh, let me know what you guys think about my boat, my boat here. Thank you guys so much, and I will talk to you all in the next video.